I would like to direct my question to Ms. Bourgeois. Um, what do you think are the solutions? I mean, in addition to what Mr. Schiemann was talking about, what do you think are the solutions which could prove effective to counter fake news? So it's a very vast question. So let me only focus on fact checking. Um, I've got a good news for you. We have more and more evidence that fact checking is effective uh, to combat fake news. Uh, if you want to fact check my statement, I will tweet out my source. Uh, but still, there are two challenges. The first challenge is that fact checking, like certain partisan groups, do not trust fact checkers. The second challenge is that the less politically knowledgeable part of the population is also also do not trust fact checkers and is less likely to be uh, convinced by fact checks. So, uh, what can what are the two sol the solutions that um, we can think about uh, in face of these challenges? So, the first uh, problem is that, as I told you, there's been a YouGov poll uh, led in October 2016 that have shown that 89 percent of the Clinton voters trust fact checking, but only 23rd percent of the Trump voters trust fact checkers. How to convince this, uh, the Trump uh, voters of the importance of fact checking? So there have been research done about that and that showed that you need to provide people with source that share their opinion. It seems pretty obvious, but if you want to refute an argument that is uh, widely uh, believed by, Trump, by uh, Republican supporters. You need to find a Republican to deny this statement. It seems obvious, but that, that's not something uh, most of uh, news outlets do. They sometimes label it at, as fake, but they don't find the right experts uh, to counter this argument. The second problem is that the people who are less informed, less educated, less politically knowledgeable they have got less positive view of the fact-checking format. And the problem is that for most journalists, in order to fact-check, you need to lay out all the facts in great details. But misinformation, it's taking hold because it's communicated in a simple way. It's communicated through powerful phrases. It's simple. And your debunking must be equally simple to be efficient. And we've seen some experiments about that. For example, the Washington Post during the Republican debate, they started posting fact checks on Snapchat. And it was this fact, this fact checking story on Snapchat received the most, was way, way more engaging than their usual political stories. Another example in Argentina, Chequeado, uh, it's a fact checking website. They used to be very formal, very serious. But at some point, they started sharing GIFs on Twitter. And it's the same. Their GIFs were shared way more widely than their usual tweets. In the US, again, Univision, they're starting uh, sending via text uh, fact-checking quizzes to the audience. And they received lots of engagement because it was a way more personal and interactive way to fact-check. Also, something very important is the reaction time. The problem is with um, fake news is that the false information are harder to dislodge the longer they go unchallenged. And sometimes fact-checking uh, websites have these fact-checking se sections and their fact-check is confined in their sections and it's not very easily accessible to the audience. So we've seen um, some news outlets developing Chrome extension that once you've, you've downloaded the Chrome extension, whenever you're on the web, on whatever page you're reading, whatever social feed you're on, whenever there's a, a, a statement that had been previously fact-checked by the newsroom, it's gonna be highlighted directly on the text, directly on the page, and you just uh, will have to click on it uh, to have access to the fact-checks. And lastly, it's not, we need to provide alternative narrative uh, in fact-checking. So it's not enough to say it's false because fact, fake news are compelling because they tap into the emotion of people. And if you just react by a simple label, it's not going to work. You need to uh, think about all your, st to, to put all your storytelling resources in action to provide a compelling, uh, a compelling alternative narrative. 